Ian's first call is the Isle of Sheppey to help nightclub owners the Lazels, who ever since being robbed 12 years ago have kept a guard dog. Whilst they've had no problems with their previous protection, Teddy, their current security detail, is out of control. Launching himself at anyone or anything. Ted, stop. Stop, Teddy. Whilst Teddy's desperate to get to the cat... No, Teddy. 72-year-old Nan, Sherry, is his favourite target. Whilst the family may disagree on Teddy's training, one thing is clear. Without help, Nan could be forced to make a devastating decision. Rehome Bailey. If I got to get rid of Bailey, it would be dreadful. It would break my heart. Yeah. yeah. But it would have to be done because, well, I've got to have somewhere to live. Hi, Am. Ah, oi, no. He's got his hand full, isn't he? Yeah. Shall we go in? Yep. Come on, Ted. Moments later... Oh, he's bringing us a ball. Come here, what have we got? Oi. Teddy's back up in Graham's grill. Ah. Yeah, he knows no boundaries, does he? Uh, One of us is going to give up. Yeah. And it ain't me. <laughs> so when he doesn't get what he wants, he pours people, does he? Yep. He greets everyone like that. Right. Especially yeah. my mum. And Graham doesn't have to wait long to see how Teddy likes to say hello to Nan. Yeah. Teddy, that's it. Oh, I see your problem. Yeah. And it can be worse. Yeah. The message needs to be no, if you jump, no. Yeah. yeah. But if you calm down, yes, good yes. boy. But in order to help you, we're going to use something to block between you and him um, your handbag. Oh, yes. Yeah, Literally just go, no. Because what happens is you get to the door and you're really fizzy, right? So you're shouting calm in an excited way. Oh, it's... If he goes <laughs> and comes back down, if he's got his paws on the ground, all right, then we're going to praise him. Good, we'll make a start then. Don't worry, okay. Do you want to go outside until yeah, I let you yeah, know? That's it, then. All right. Okay then. Teddy is an unknown quantity. We'll know how well this is going to go when we start to train. Will he listen? Will he back down? Or will he be more persistent than Sherry? That's possible. There's a lot to go wrong. With Gaynor and Trevor also primed to keep a lid on their excitement, will Teddy realise Nan's not playtime? <laughs> Hiya, come on in. With a calm atmosphere... Oh, good lad. ..and a bit of praise... Good boy. ..on the first go, Teddy keeps his paws firmly on the floor. And when no. he shows the slightest no. hint of excitement... No. Sherry knows no. exactly what to tell him. Ruger is a tearaway toddler who does what he wants... No. ..when he wants. Down. No. No, no, no. Leave the bed alone. Unless he's asleep. We don't relax, really, cos it is. It's just exhausting. It's just one thing after another. It's like having a child. After moving into their dream home, civil servants Joe and Ian wanted a puppy to share their life with. Calm down. And just under a year ago, they fell in love with handsome Hungarian Vishla Ruga. So Ian and I married later in life, really, so we haven't got any children. So we did think that Ruga would probably complete our little family. No. I suppose we have this perfect vision of the two of us sat here with a nice, quiet dog reading a book and something. We've got paper everywhere, cushion innards everywhere. But since moving in, this problem child has turned their lives upside down. Desperate for the peaceful pre-puppy life they once had, they're now considering the unthinkable. I sort of have contemplated what it would be like you know, putting on his collar and harness for the last time, taking him in the car, taking him somewhere and then saying goodbye. <laughs> Sorry. Fortunately for Joe and Ian, help is on the way. 
Hi, Graham. Morning. You all nice right? Nice to meet you. I'm Joe. Joe, nice to meet you. Come on. Very good. Yeah. So, what's he? Oh, oh move the. Stop. I was going to ask, what's the problem? <laughs> I think I can see it. Yeah. He has various problems, Graham, but yeah. he is a professional stealer of right. things, and food is, yeah. is one of his favourites. He's absolutely dreadful with food. Is it? I mean, is this just when there's food around? Um, he no, he came to serve. Ruger. That's your bin. The bin is one of his favourites at the moment. Yeah. But I think that's a distraction technique. Leave it. <laughs> right, so he knocks the bin over, you go for the bin, then he goes, ah, yes. margarine. Yes. Oh, oh there he yeah. goes. So even having a chat is kind of impossible, isn't it? Because yes. he's, he's yes. just like, one of you has got to fend off the dog all the time while the other one does yeah. something. Does oh, he's away again. Graham believes the key to solving their problems starts with knocking him off his pedestal. Ruger getting up on the settee like that, towering over them, and sending me quite a big message. You know, he thinks he's top dog, and at the moment, he is. So, to turn this around as soon as Ruger heads up to his seat of power, it's time to get down. Pull him down. Come on. That's it. Come on, no. <laughs> Keep at it. Now he might start to play up, right? Because you're starting to assert yourself and go, no, I'm not having you up there anymore. You just sit in that. Ah, 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 ah. No. Off. He's like, I'm not coming. No, I'm afraid you are. Off. That's Good it. Boy. It's just not negotiable. You're getting off. the problem. Good boy. And now... <laughs> hey. That's great. Oh, are you speechless? <laughs> The Stimpsons have rehomed rescue dog Daisy. Yes. Sadly, Daisy had a tough start in life. After struggling with her behaviour, her previous owners took her to the vet. They said that they couldn't cope with her anymore and would he put her to sleep. So for a two-year-old dog, you know, the vet said, no, I'll see if I can rehome her. Wanting a dog for extra company, Karen was moved by Daisy's heartbreaking story and took her in. They told us that she wasn't walked, she wasn't exercised, so... She wasn't trained. Was I prepared? No. <laughs> the Stimpsons hoped to give Daisy her forever home, but being under constant house arrest is taking its toll. To think that that could go on for, you know, another 10, 15 years, the alternative would be to seriously think about rehoming or... But to sleep? Awful. Absolutely awful. Never live with myself. But whilst the family are desperate for Graham to break this vicious cycle, he knows saving Daisy won't be easy. Actually, yeah? Yes, sir. That must be Daisy, then. That was Daisy. OK, well, let's meet her. Yeah, come on. Thank you. So, so this is Daisy. She's quietened down a bit now, look. Yeah, she has. We're all sitting down, so she's relatively OK. Nobody's leaving. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So tell me a bit more about your problem, then. Yeah, we think Daisy has separation anxiety whenever go to leave the house, she starts barking, circling, yeah. jumping, okay. going a bit mad. Well, I sort of saw the tail end of things when I came and knocked on the door. Um, can you show me what it's like when you when you leave? Yeah, of course. Calm down. It's all right, I'm going to come back. Oh. <laughs> Careful. Graham believes that dealing with each of Daisy's triggers in isolation holds the key to solving all the family's problems, starting with when they get ready to leave. First thing for you is to get your shoes, isn't it? Okay. Just take it bit by bit. Okay. So. But will his theory work? That's one boot. With Daisy staying calm, she's praised. There. Good girl. Time for the next trigger. 
Right, next stage, coat, I guess. Good girl, Daisy. There. Good girl, Daisy. That's it. Right, I'll just take a moment. She's jumping. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Good girl, oh. Daisy. If you're going to leave, the next thing you'd probably do, I guess, is pick up your keys. Mm hmm. Let's see what happens next. Ah. Uh, no. Stop. Wait for it. Wait for it. Give her a chance. Good girl, Daisy. Good girl. So you you put some boots on. You've got a coat on. Mm. You've got keys in your hand, mm. right? Mm. And she's calm. Amazing. No. In Chester, master dog trainer Graham Hall has been called to the rescue of tattoo artist Cheryl, whose boxer Rhodesian Ridgeback has become extremely aggressive to other dogs after being attacked 18 months ago. Hide behind the bush. Having seen how both the owner and dog react when out in public, he thinks he knows where the real problem lies. I think you've been traumatised, and I don't think you ever have moved on, actually. And because of that, you've not allowed her to move on. Yeah? So I've got a nervous lady helping a nervous lady to convince a nervous dog that everything's all right, really. And that's yeah. my problem. OK. What I see when she does launch is that you hold on for dear life yes. with the harness, because you think that gives you control. Yes. Actually, what that does is it allows her to just kind of go, thank you very much, she's a strong dog. She can put her chest muscles into it as well, and off she goes. Right. So, actually, the collar's the way to go. OK. I think it's really hard to get Cheryl to change her behaviour because the emotions are still really strong and she's been driven by that. Graham believes Penny's aggression towards other dogs is actually driven by a need to protect her anxious owner. But if she was walked by someone who is calm and in control, she would no longer feel the urge to attack. Over the last 18 months, every time a dog has come close, um, Cheryl's been pulling on the lead and shouting, and, and that's telling Penny that her owner is scared and she needs to step up and attack. Penny needs a clear message. I'm in control, you don't need to worry. You watch. Okay. So when a walker approaches with two mastiffs, Graham takes the lead. Come on, good girl. As soon as Penny starts to react, no. Graham gives a quick tug on the lead with a command, no. then places himself in front of Penny to show her he's in charge. That's better. Right. And with the confident approach, Penny soon relaxes. I never thought Penny would be able to walk that close to a dog. She was good as gold. And my anxiety just went straight down. Now Graham has proved to Cheryl Penny can walk nicely on the lead, close to other dogs, it's time for her to take over. But will Cheryl be able to hold her nerve and convince Penny that she is now in control? Now, don't let her pull No. It. That's it. If you're up for it, we should get a little bit nearer. Yeah. Let's do that. Very good. This is the closest I've ever, ever been with her on the lead. Brilliant. And she's been like this. Good. N no. In fact... No. Good girl. She's a bit more interested in something happening in the park. Good I? girl. Let's carry on going. How are you feeling? Brilliant. Good. If she starts to lose her composure, you tell her. Good girl. Because Mum's in charge now. My confidence has been really built up. Graham's taught me I can walk near a dog without her barking and looking like a menacing dog, but she's not. Well, I think what we've just seen is a little bit of magic. Initially, Penny wasn't entirely happy to be near to those dogs, but she got the idea very quickly. But the magic bit actually was Cheryl, because I could just feel that alongside me was a lady who'd gone from being super nervous to actually quite excited. <laughs>